Folks, what the crap's going on? Heir of Carthage here, and yes, Mr. Soul Invictus is back, and he's going to be playing against Kali. So they are going to be on the medicine. It's going to be an Iceni versus Bowiei match, and we haven't actually seen a ton of Bowiei since my return to Rome 2. Thank you to Soul Invictus, by the way, every time I say my return to Rome 2. It's not technically my return, because I haven't had a ton of time to play, though we did do a campaign and some other things. Uh, but these replays um, definitely got kickstarted by Soul Invictus and his love for the Rome 2 multiplayer battles, and I very much appreciate him. Absolutely awesome, and he's done a spectacular service to my channel, and if you all appreciate it, if you like watching these battles, please do me a favor. Get in the comments and leave a thank you for him. Feel free to go by his channel, too. I have it linked in the description. So, in any case, let's keep things moving. And no, he didn't ask me to, to add any of that in there. I'm doing it because he deserves it. <laughs> so, thank you, Soul. Um, so we're going to take a look at the uh, the army for the Bowie here. They've got a huge front line of Levy Freeman. It looks like there's five of them. And there's some Celtic warriors on either flank, too. It's a nice light sword unit to put in some good flank charges. We're going to see sword followers for the main line. Uh, sword followers are a really excellent mid-tier sword provided by the Bowie Eye. You can see here, just really good all-around stats. Solid armor, good damage, okay attack, um, solid charge bonus. Pretty decent melee defense. I mean, this is a really good mid-tier sword. Maybe the best mid-tier sword, I don't know. Uh, but they're they're definitely close if they're not. We're going to have a couple of Oathsworn in the back line. Uh, I say a couple. Actually, it looks like only one Oathsworn that I'm seeing in the back line. We have a Noble Horse and a Heavy Horse here. It looks like another Heavy Horse. So three Heavy Horse and a Noble Horse. So four Heavy Melee Cavalry. One heavy melee, or super heavy melee infantry there. Let's take a look at the Iceni. They've split off into wings. Now, this can be an interesting strategy. If it causes your opponent a mistake, you can try and capitalize on it. It can also be risky in the sense that when you split off into a wing, if the enemy, you know, gets you stuck or gets you separated, they can kill one of your wings uh, alone. So you have to manage these, and it requires extra micromanagement. Again, can lead to a good result depending on how it turns out. There's a couple Levy Freeman here and some Painted One. Painted Ones are high charge, high damage. They scare, but they fall apart in a prolonged melee because they just don't have much armor. Uh, the Heroic Riders are going to be supporting them as well as a Druidic Noble out here, a unit that we saw recently in a video, so cool to see them here again. And these replays, by the way, were sent in around the same time, so this is not one player seeing one and then doing the same, so this is just both players had apparently used them recently. Uh, we've got a couple of ambushers uh, who are kind of stalking their way here in the background. Spread very wide. I guess these units are still able to be spread wide. Most units can't be spread that wide. Take a look at the middle here. In the middle we've got some Britain Scout Riders. Looks like a Chariot unit and the Heroic Rider General. And then the other flank is going to be, I think, more of the same. Levy Freeman painted ones. Heroic Riders. This is a very odd Iceni army. There is no heavy infantry at play for the Iceni. It is very cavalry heavy. Um, and what little infantry there is, is, is very light. Um, so this is going to be an interesting challenge for the Iceni because the Boei have some... These sword followers are going to be tough as nails. Uh, compared to the, the infantry of the Iceni here. Um, so it's, it's going to be curious. Though the Iceni, I mean, if you take a look, the painted ones, let's just get head back over here. I mean, that's a really high charge. That's 10 more charge than the Sword Follower. Um, and, but, I mean, when you look at the weapon damage, it's not near as high. Uh, so, I mean, it's mostly a scare effect. So the, the Iceni are going to have to get some some terror, or I say terror because I'm used to Warhammer. Uh, fear routes, basically. Interesting probe here by this heavy horse. Almost like maybe he was expecting something back there. He's doing some scouting. He, he may expect the ambushers, maybe wondering where the rest of the Iceni army is. I'm not sure, but it was an interesting probe there by the heavy horse, trying to get some intel back here on what's going on. It's a really smart play there by the Bowiei to not overcommit. And so I imagine what we'll see is if the Bowiei start to slide over here to, you know, the, the left for the Bowiei, you're going to see the Iceni pushing in this way and falling back this way. So I think it's going to be a collapse and attack type of thing. Fall away from where the Bowie Eye move and attack them from the other flank. Basically wait until you see an opening. It's a dangerous game here though, like I said, because these flanks are pretty light units and there's some seriously tough heavy cavalry uh, floating around for the Bowie Eye. Now, really good heavy cavalry here too uh, with the Heroic Riders. They do have good support. 
These painted ones are going to have to push back those Celtic warriors, so we may see that initial engagement here soon. These units are getting awfully close to each other. Little bit of a brawl starting up there. But the Iceni are still going to fall away from that if they can. I think it's still... I say it's a little bit early for him to engage. Neither player has brought any skirmishers, which is interesting. So, without skirmishers in this early play here, look at this, that heavy horse wants a piece of that a scout rider. That scout rider may be trying to... I don't know if it's trying to lure them. I mean, the ambushers keep falling away. They don't want to be seen. Ooh, this heroic rider is getting real dangerous here. I don't know if it got its charge against the heavy horse. I don't think it did. It may have been trying to charge the Axe Warriors. All right. The Heroic Rider is going to fall out of there. I don't think it took the better of that engagement, but the Painted That's Ones are going to get a pretty clean charge, and they're going to be supported by the Levy Freeman here. The Painted Ones picked up a lot of kills on that charge. I mean, a tremendous number of kills. So that was a really nice charge for them. Same thing... Eh, no, not near as many kills there against those Celtic Warriors. So that Painted One it didn't go as well. And so here's where the Wings come into play. If this engagement plays out too quickly, the Iceni are screwed because they will have given up a whole flank here. That Druidic Noble got hit by a Javelin Volley from the Osworn, and it's going to have to fall back. They have no prayer in that fight. None of these units do. The Sword Band looks like it's going to come in and maybe fill in for the Painted Ones, maybe give them another charge. That was a nice Javelin Volley there into the Heavy Horse. The Ambushers are now visible, at least one of them is. They're moving in, so the Boii have committed some troops to the side of the fight. After being hit initially pretty hard, that Heroic Rider is coming back in, trying to look for a little redemption. Uh, it's supported by a Levy Freeman, but that Levy Freeman's getting chopped up by Axe Warriors. And that Painted One got a really nice initial engagement, but this is what I said, they, they can fall apart later on. That Sword Follower is going to come and clean that up. And this is where the fight can get really tricky for the Iceni. Here come those Chariots. Uh, the Chariots so far have not gotten into combat. <laughs> They're knocking down their own Painted Ones on the way in. There is an Oath Sworn here, which would be a great hit for those Chariots. Um, if they can get in there and soften up some of the hit points on the Chariots. Here comes the Druidic Nobles to help follow up against that Sword Follower, trying to keep that Painted One in the fight a little longer, no doubt. That Heroic Rider is going to lose here, and it's about to be hit by Noble Horse. It's a bit of a tough scenario, but the Ambushers are coming in now, too, so this particular spot of the fight for the Bowie Eye is going to be challenging. Those Oath Sworn are now being trampled by Chariots. They will slowly work away at the hit points there. Now, these these are not as tough as Scythe Chariots in terms of kills, but they'll get some hit point damage done. And you can see they've racked up 83 kills. Now, they're also taking some damage. Uh, they're being pursued by a heavy horse there, which has a bonus versus large. And after all that Chariot damage, we're going to have an Ambusher charge here. Again, another high charge unit, high damage. And uh, some of these units over here for the Bowie Eye are getting a little bit challenged. That chariot unit's still flowing around. Ooh, right. took some javelins there. It's got 149 kills, though. It got in, and some of those kills were against Oathsworn. In fact, quite a few were. Understood. Looks like the uh, Iceni are going to maybe fall back from this engagement and try and get uh, another set of charges in. That Druidic Noble's doing a good job holding here, but it is going to not last. And now the Iceni are going to bring the attack from the other flank, while the Boei are busy fighting this one. You can see the challenge for the Iceni here, though. These light units, it's its difficult for them to punch through the heavy armor of the Bowie. I, I have to credit Soul. This is a tricky build to pull off, in my opinion. I i, I wouldn't be able to control this build well. It, it requires a lot of finesse. And a person like myself would probably just fall apart with it pretty quickly. However, it is a dangerous build. You wouldn't want to underestimate it. And I think that Callie here on the other side is doing a good job of trying to keep up with it and not allowing himself to get caught in every wrong engagement. Um, he did end up taking some pretty heavy damage to it over here. But again, I don't think he's just, you know, fallen for it per se, right? It's heroic Riders and other units coming out of here. Let's see that Sword Follower rolling in. Uh, the nice counter charge. These painted ones look like they want to cycle. Yep, that one's going to cycle over to that sword follower. This one might want to cycle out of that fight while those Levy Freemen are there and try and get a second charge into that because they are a shock infantry. If you're able to get a few charges with them, it's always going to be for the better. That noble horse is quite healthy and ready to keep fighting. Uh, the chariots are back here getting a rest. Actually, not a bad idea to try and get some more out of them. These ambushers were falling away from an axe warrior, maybe looking to get another charge. Let's see how this fight looks over here. 
painted ones. Um, initially got some good damage against those sword followers. Um, pretty good damage on those painted ones too, but at this point, um, the Iceni are going to need to crack some of these fights, and there is a good opportunity for some rear charges here, but let's see. One of them is going for Heavy Horse. It's got a charge on that unit. Looks like the Levy Freemen are going to help interact there. Okay, that's going to be enough to allow this Noble Horse a rear charge here. The Celtic Warriors are going to turn around to try and counter that. And remember that the Painted Ones put a scare effect on, so the morale could be pretty low here. The Bowie Eye, they're separated quite a ways from their general. Speaking of their general, he just got a really nice charge into the Iceni general. There are Levy Freeman nearby for the Iceni that are going to need to help support that fight. The Chariots are struggling with their morale, and it looks like they're going to come in for another charge against the Oathsworn. That is an appropriate target, if ever there were one. So the Sword Followers and the Oathsworn, they've got a lot of kills, about 170 kills. Heroic Riders, it's a pretty tight fight here between these two generals. Battle Rhythm there coming in for the Noble Horse. Let's check back to this fight over here. Did the Iceni get the route they needed? Not, not really. And then they got driven back there. Uh, it's kind of starting to fall apart for the Iceni here. So Soul's Ambusher and Heavy Charge uh, build here with the wings. It was, it was curious, but at this point it looks like the Bowie I are just outlasting uh, with the armor and just kind of the more sturdy type of uh, army. Interesting, again, that both came without skirmishers. I don't know if that was planned or if it was just circumstance. I'll allow them to comment if they see it. Um, if it was planned, then it's interesting to see a battle without it. If it's just circumstance, then it's crazy, because, you know, a lot of times people were way too worried to come without skirmishers here. But honestly, if the Bowie I had come without skirmish or come with skirmishers, let's think through that scenario there. If they had come with skirmishers, it means less funding for either the melee cavalry or the melee infantry, or both. And if that's the case, then Soul's army does become pretty dangerous, uh, because at that point he may have a cavalry advantage, which then becomes very dangerous for the Boei, uh, or the infantry, there may not just be enough of them to help stand up to this type of thing for the Boei. So it is curious that he ended up coming with just such a solid horde of, of really sturdy, good infantry here. And again, that may have been by design, expecting maybe the Britons were going to be, or the Iceni were going to be a little more skirmishy, and maybe he wanted to rush um, because he came in with four heavy cavalry and you know a ton of good infantry. So he may have wanted to rush them. I don't know. It's like I said, it's curious to see both of them coming to the battlefield with basically no skirmishing, uh, a lot of kills for both players. We take a look at some of these units. These painted ones got a fair number of kills. So did some of the others. Again, this army is very fragile. It takes excellent control, and that is not easy to do. So kudos to Soul for trying to pull that off. And some of his units were getting some nice kills. These chariots have got about 200. Um, some good kills on some of the heroic riders, the ambushers. Some of them picked up some nice, some nice value. Uh, but the Bowie Eye, man, these guys just have a really sturdy line of swords. <laughs> and it can be difficult to overcome. Sword followers are fantastic in terms of mid-tier melee infantry. They punch a very nice um, value for the price that you get them. Um, and then, of course, Oathsworn are always a tough unit. Now, this one got actually pretty limited by that, that chariot, so not a bad job. I mean, it's not like the Oathsworn did nothing, but, you know, it was limited, I think, to a degree by the chariot, so well done. But those sword followers carrying the day there. GG to both players. Again, appreciate Soul and Callie for this one. Hopefully we'll see more from them soon. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will see you all soon with some more action in Total War Rome 2.